I'm Chris Shattuck and this is how to use the form API to create and alter forms. In this video, we're going to be talking about building, validating, and processing dynamic forms, as well as Drupal's form utility functions. As you get started working with Drupal forms, you can draw from any experience that you've had working with HTML-based forms, because the structure of processing that goes into HTML-based forms is very similar at its core to Drupal's. It's a four-step process, and what I'll do is talk about those four steps, what happens on each one, and then we'll go through again and talk about what Drupal layers onto each. So first of all, we have the form construction process. In HTML, this involves adding inputs, text areas, text fields, checkboxes, and the like as well as any theming that goes around the presentation of that form. The next step is client-side validation. We'll use JavaScript to help the user make sure that they've added any necessary information and that it conforms to the conventions that are required by the form. So this helps the user, but it doesn't necessarily help security because JavaScript can be bypassed, we also need to make sure that any checks that we do for security purposes are also done on the server side. So that, that's the next step, is dealing with server side validation. During this part of the process, we check to make sure, one, that the user has input the correct data, and that they haven't accidentally inserted information in the incorrect structure. We also do security checks. So we're going to check to make sure that the user isn't trying to insert any malicious data into the form. And finally, we deal with the processing of that form. If the user passes validation, they move on to this step. If not, they move to the beginning where they refill in the form or edit the data that's incorrect. When it's submitted, then a variety of things can happen with that data. It can be inserted into a database or processed as a form mailing. And at this point, we need to make sure that any data that's gotten to this level is sanitized. You can also describe Drupal's form processing in these four steps as well. And here's what they add and change at each level. So initially, when you'd normally be supplying HTML, Instead, you're going to be supplying something called a render array, which is an array of data that includes information about the form itself, as well as any inputs that are being added to the form. So we'll go over this in detail, but you can add information like the type of element that's going to be added, a text area, text field, checkboxes, and so on, as well as simple validation, like if that input is required and specific information about that input, such as the size or the maximum allowed input. The benefits of using a render array are twofold. First of all, it allows modules to modify virtually any aspect of the data very easily. So we can easily change one input type to another, add a, a required attribute to a field, or add additional fields or remove fields. Secondly, by handing off this processing to Drupal, we allow it to add several layers of validation and security as well. So for example, a token is added to each form to ensure that a form on one site can't be submitted by a form on another site. That's called cross-site request forgeries. And we're protected against that by default simply by handing our render array off to Drupal instead of using a plain HTML form. During the second part of the process, client-side validation, Drupal adds some functionality that can be triggered simply by passing certain attributes to the render array. These are more passive type validations rather than active. So instead of making sure that the user has an input something that's not right, it instead limits the inputs that can be added. So for example, say you have a form that involves selecting data about a car. You have a model input and you have a year input. And the number of years that are displaying in the year input are dependent on which model is chosen. So in Drupal, you can have 
the values in that year select change based on the model that's selected. So this isn't a validation that will throw up an error if the wrong year is selected. Instead, it changes the years that are available to be selected. So this is more passive and more usable in the long run. If you need to add any additional validation, you can do so via JavaScript and jQuery in your own module. During the next step, the validation process, Drupal handles a lot of things out of the box. For example, you can add a required attribute to any input to make sure that the user has inserted some data into it. If you need to do additional validation, you can do so in a validation function. Other modules can also register their own validation functions for any form to validate before it gets processed. And finally, during the submission process, Drupal acts in a very similar way to during the validation process in that there's a submit function, and you can register that within the module that defines the form, or additional modules can process that data in some way by adding their own submission functions.